on this occasion, we are going to learn about verbalizing data, how to present data effectively, include the meaning of data presentation, essential tips on data presentation, and strategies for presenting data effectively. Do you know what is data presentation? So guys, in many ways, data presentation is like storytelling, only you do them with a series of graphs and charts. Presenting data involves the use of a variety of different graphical techniques to visually show the reader the relationship between different data sets to emphasize the nature of a particular aspect of the data or to geographically place data appropriately on a map. And presenting the data includes the pictorial representation of the data by using graphs, charts, maps, and other methods. These methods help in adding the visual aspect to data which make it much more comfortable and easy to understand. This visual representation of data is called as data visualization. Representation is depend on the available data point, data set, data format, file format, available tools, and etc. So guys, providing a context helps your audience visualize and understand the numbers. To help you achieve that, here are three tips on how to represent data effectively. 1. Use the right chart. 2. Keep it simple. 3. Use text wisely and sparingly. And guys, it will be explained in the next slide. Enough for me and thank you. There are three essential tips on data presentation. The first is use the right chart. Selecting the right chart type is by asking yourself how many variables do you want to show, how many data points you want to display, and how you want to scale your axis. If you have data you want to visualize, make sure you use the right chart while your data might work with multiple chart types it's up to you to select the one that ensures your message is clear and accurate remember data is only valuable if you know how to visualize it and give context before making a chart it's important to understand why you need one find patterns identify trends and tell a story thing the message you want to share with your audience jadi sebelum membuat bagan atau grafik penting untuk memahami mengapa kita membutuhkannya bagan peta dan infografik membantu orang memahami data yang rumit menemukan pola mengidentifikasi tren dan pikiran tentang pesan yang ingin kita bagikan dengan audiens agar membuat grafik atau bagan pada presentasi kita menjadi menakjubkan dan kuat untuk mendorong keterlibatan audiens There are four main types of charts The first, comparison charts The second, relationship charts The third, composition charts And the fourth, distribution charts See this what would you like to show? Comparison charts are used to compare one or more datasets. They can compare items or show differences over time. Relationship charts are used to show a connection or 
correlation between two or more variables. Composition charts are used to display parts of a whole and change over time. The distribution charts are used to show how variables are distributed over time, helping identify outliers and trends. Here is the example. The pie charts is one of the most used types of all time. Pie charts are used to show parts of a whole. A pie chart represents number in percentage and the total sum all the divided segments equal 100%. You can use the best practice for creating pie charts. Make sure your segments add up to 100 sounds above us, but this is a common mistake. Keep it clean and consistent. Compare just a few categories to get your point across. If the pie slice have roughly the same size, consider to use a bar or column chart instead. Avoid using 3D imagery or tilt your pie chart. This often make your data impossible to read because your viewer is trying to quickly compare angels. And the other example is line chart. Reveals trends or change over time. Line charts can be used to show relationships when a continuous data set and can be applied to a wide variety of categories including daily number of visitors to a seat or variations in stock basis. And the second is keep it simple. When it comes to making qualitative data digestible, simplicity does the trick. Limit the number of elements of the slide as much as possible and provide only the bare essentials. See how simple this slide is? Is one glance, your A immediately goes to the percentage of the donut because there are no text box, illustration, graphics, as a trap to distract you. Sometimes more context is needed for your numbers to make sense. In the spirit of keeping your slides neat, you may be tempted so spread the data across two slides, but that makes it complicated, so putting it all on one slide is your only option. In such cases, the mantra of keep it simple still applies. The trick lies in neat positioning and clever formatting. In the above slides, we have used box to highlight sporting figures while giving enough attention to the main chart. This separates them visually and helps the audience focus better. With the slide already pretty full, it's crucial to use a plain background or risk overwhelming your viewers. That's it from me. Thank you. Use text easily and sparingly. The text plays a vital role in data presentation and should be used strategically. To highlight a particular statistic, do not hesitate to go all out and have that be the focal point of your slide for emphasis. Keep text to a minimum and as a supporting element. Maksudnya, gunakan teks dengan bijak dan hemat. Karena kita menceritakan sebuah cerita dengan angka, bukan berarti teks tidak dapat digunakan. Faktanya, hal sebaliknya terbukti benar. Teks berperan penting dalam penyajian data dan harus digunakan secara strategis. Untuk menyorot statistik tertentu, jangan ragu untuk berusaha dan dijadikan itu sebagai titik fokus slide dalam penekanan. Minimalkan teks dan elemen sebagai pendukung. 
next the next material about five strategies for presenting effective data first ask yourself some question the type of information you are presenting should help drive your decision on which type of visual to use maksudnya itu tanyakan pada diri anda beberapa pertanyaan jenis informasi yang akan disajikan yang akan membantu mengarahkan keputusan tentang jenis visual yang akan digunakan jenis informasi itu apakah berupa data numerik apakah berupa konseptual apakah data berupa perbandingan antara kumpulan beberapa data jadi intinya itu bertanya kepada diri sendiri informasi apa yang akan disajikan I think enough for me Thank you and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh And the next strategies for presenting effective data is identify your exact purpose This is the crack of the matter You have to be able to succinctly identify what your message is and why anyone should even care about it Consider yourself a new fiction writer of sort A journalist who writes an editorial must clearly state his message and back it up. A student crafting a research paper must have a thesis statement in his introduction, and a marketing creating copy must have a telephone message for each piece. As Jody Wright from the Professional Writing Service states, no piece of writing can enrich an, uh, an audience unclass it has a thesis and a purpose it has to purpose a thesis and explain its importance to the reading audience otherwise there is no reason to write the piece at all the question to ask yourself is so well this according to other called Kravlik in the his book storytelling this with data He suggests that before any attempts to put together a graphic story, the creator explains the information for verbally to someone unfamiliar with that data or information. Be certain that the, il- that the listener can be paid back, not the numbers necessarily, but the point of the message. And for the next one, is get all school. Instead of jumping right into an Excel or PowerPoint template, sit down and think about how best to represent your story. This calls for some paper, pencils, and perhaps some colored markers to sketch a storyboard. At this point, you should experiment with different types of templates for your presentation, but you don't have to start from scratch. If you have the purpose clearly defined, then you can look at samples of other crafts, cars, and others that have similar purpose, compare or contrast, distribute, some relationship, compose information that solves chance of a time or complement of a large concept. Moreover, Harvard Business Review has published a card or imagine that of the types of tools that work well for numerous types of information and data to be presented. And here is a card from Crazy Age that provides lots of situation for visual de- depiction based upon your purpose or what you want to show your audience and why. Simplify atau menyederhanakan. This process involves several steps. Angkah langkahnya sebagai berikut. First, See the data we eliminate Lihat data yang kita hilangkan Data yang terlalu banyak dan terlalu rumit Second, simplify the visual Sederhanakan visual atau tampilan Third, use color Gunakan warna supaya the case factor bisa tersampaikan dan menarik perhatian Fourth, set up a hierarchy of letter and number size Based upon the order of importance, siapkan hierarki ukuran huruf dan angka berdasarkan ukuran kepentingan.
In the end, every piece of fiction or non-fiction has a theme and an audience to educate, inform, entertain, and or inspire. Each data has important content to be published. Make sure yours does it well. Tiap karya baik fiksi maupun non-fiksi memiliki tema dan audiens untuk mendidik, menginformasikan, menghibur, ataupun menginspirasi. Setiap berata memiliki isi yang penting untuk dipublikasikan. Pastikan kita melakukan dengan baik. That's enough for me. Thank you.